Hi everyone, welcome back to the Heterogeneous Parallel Programming class. We're at lecture 6.3, Efficient Host Device Data Transfer, and we're going to be discussing overlapping data transfer with computation. The objective of this lecture is for you to learn to overlap data transfer with computation. And overlapping data uh, communication or transfer with computation is a fundamental problem for um, uh, large-scale parallel computing. And um, uh, you will have exactly the same kind of problem for, with other uh, programming systems, such as uh, message passing interface or MPI uh, programs. So uh, today, we're going to focus on how we can handle uh, such latent uh, uh, overlapping the data transfer and computation uh, in the uh, CUDA environment using asynchronous data transfer and also uh, to uh, discuss some of the practical limitations of CUDA streams. So, um, now that we have discussed the con concept of CUDA streams in the previous lecture, uh, we're now ready for uh, the practical uh, use of streams in a CUDA host code. So here we show the uh, declaration of uh, stream handles. So the, this, there's a special type CUDA stream underscore T, and uh, we can declare two handles or pointers to the streams. Uh, we call them stream zero and stream one. Once we declare these two variables, we can call CUDA stream create with the address of these uh, uh, variables. And um, the create, the uh, API call will, return, will uh, generate a CUDA stream, generate all the, the appropriate queues, and then uh, place the pointer to the stream or the queue into the uh, stream zero and stream one. So uh, when we use uh, a memory copy and kernel launch and so on in the future, we can use uh, one of these two uh, stream handles to indicate uh, which stream we, are, uh, we would like to issue the tasks or commands to. And here we, uh, we show that we can declare uh, sections of the uh, vectors for A, B, and C that we're going to use to, uh, uh, or segments in order to achieve the overlapping between communication and computation. So here we show the uh, uh, practical multi-stream uh, code, host code, to achieve uh, some level of uh, overlap between the uh, data transfer and computation. So here we show that um, uh, we would divide all the, the, the input and output vectors into e uh, equal size segments. And uh, uh, the size of each segment is defined in the by the variable seg size. And we're going to uh, c cover the data transfer and computation of two of the segments in each iteration of this loop. So uh, if we did, uh, divide up the, uh, the vector into, let's say, 100 segments, then uh, we will be uh, iterating this loop 50 times. And each, uh, each iteration of the loop, we will take two seg uh, segments, send them to the GPU, do the computation, and send back the result data. And here we show the, the, the data copy from host to device. And we're using CUDA main copy async. And uh, uh, this is the asynchronous the, the data transfer that we, uh, we, we talked about uh, a little bit uh, earlier. And then uh, we, ought, uh, we also uh, will need to make sure that when we allocate HA and HB, we need to allocate them in pinned uh, host memory. And then uh, uh, we, uh, we will just uh, use I to essentially advance the pointer to this, uh, the particular segment that we're sending to the GPU. And uh, we do the data copy from host to device. We launch a kernel, and we uh, uh, copy the data uh, from device back to the host, all using stream zero handle. So the, all these uh, tasks will be going into the queue for stream zero. And uh, uh, then the second part of that iteration will do the same thing to the next segment. And, uh, uh, but we will be uh, issuing these commands in, or tasks into stream one. So the, that's why in each iteration, we take care of two segments. And then uh, we advance uh, the uh, i by two segment sizes. And then we continue until we finish all the data. So um, in some of the older GPUs, uh, the, there's actually no stream queues in the, uh, in the implementation. But rather, the queues are actually uh, 
uh, associated with the copy engine and the kernel engine. The copy engine is the hardware that does PCIe, uh, PCIe data, uh, uh, data bus transfer uh, up, meaning from device back to the host, or down, meaning from host to device. So uh, this is really the DNA hardware that we uh, refer to in uh, 6.1. And there is a queue associated with that, a real hardware uh, queue associated with it. And then uh, there is a kernel engine where uh, you also have these uh, kernel tasks, kernel launch tasks associated with the kernel engine. And the kernel engine is really just um, uh, the, uh, the, the mechanism that consists of all the streaming multiprocessors for executing uh, CUDA kernels. So uh, when we uh, issue these tasks into the conceptual streaming queues in, that, uh, in those generations of hardware, what happens is that uh, we're actually uh, going to be entering um, the memory uh, data transfer tasks into the copy engine queue. And then uh, we're entering all the kernel launches into the kernel engine queue. So uh, we're mixing up the stream, uh, the, uh, the, mem uh, the cut data transfer tasks from two different streams, stream zero here and the stream one here. Uh, however, uh, we are going to uh, allow parallel execution uh, between uh, the two uh, engines, the copy engine and the kernel engine, by keeping track of the dependencies uh, between the ent uh, entries in these queues. For example, uh, the, uh, the kernel launch zero uh, depends on the, uh, the data copy of A0 and B0 from host to device. So there is a, a dependence arc that goes from kernel zero to these two so that uh, when both uh, reach the, the beginning, the, uh, reach the, uh, the, uh, the head of the queue, then um, the, the kernel zero will only be able to execute if both memory copy A0 and um, B0 have, uh, have completed their execution. So this allows the, um, the, the hardware to keep track of the fact that uh, these, uh, the kernel launch zero actually come in in the same stream as memory copy A0 and uh, memory, uh, mem copy B0. So this allows uh, us to, uh, to be able to do the, uh, do the uh, uh, tasks in parallel, but still respect the original um, sequence ordering of, uh, within stream zero. And we, here, we, we have the same thing. We have um, the kernel one to uh, depend on the memory copy A1 and B1, and then the copy back C1 will depend on the kernel one. So, um, but, but well, since we have now a hardware queue that, um, uh, that's behind the copy engine, so all the entries will be released from this copy queue, uh, copy engine in sequence. So uh, we can ha actually have a situation where a, a stream one task will be blocked by one of the stream zero tasks because of this uh, implementation uh, choice. So we can, all, uh, in this particular design, we can also have uh, memory copy uh, B, uh, uh, let's say C0 to be in uh, PCIe up, and then we can immediately relate, uh, release memory copy A1 into PCIe down uh, as long as, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, as long as uh, we we can we have uh, memory all and main copy A zero B zero and C zero already uh, either executed or in progress in uh, in the uh, actual up and down links. So um, this allows us some level of parallelism, and we're going to see this uh, effect uh, here. So um, with that, uh, the copy engine queue and the uh, the kernel queue we're going to actually have an execution timing that is not quite what we hoped for in the ideal uh, timing diagram we showed a little earlier. So we, here we showed that uh, for uh, one of the loop iterations, we're going to have uh, the copied uh, data from host to device, and then we have the compute, we have the, uh, the data transfer uh, from device back to host. So this device transfer back from, uh, the data transfer back from device to host actually blocks the transfer of A1 and B1 in that queue. Well, well this uh, copy back task is waiting for the compute from the same stream, it actually blocks all the uh, tasks behind it in the copy engine queue. 
so uh, we have the trans uh, we we cannot the release the transfer of a1 and b1 until this transfer c is released into the pcie up um, hardware and that's when we can start the execution of uh, transferring a1 and b1 so we have a little bit overlap we allow the overlap of data transfer of the next element uh, segment from host to device while we transfer the data back from the device to host. But we don't quite have the uh, overlap of compute with the data transfer that we're hoping to achieve with that piece of code. So uh, here we show a better multi-stream host code that will achieve more of the overlap that we're hoping for. So within the same loop iteration, we actually reordered the order of um, memory copy and the uh, kernel uh, and essentially interleave the data copy uh, from host to device, the kernel launch, and the, the data copy from device back between the two streams. So we'll do the data copy from host to device with stream zero, and immediately we'll do data copy from host to device with stream one. So this uh, then it will be followed by the two kernel launches for both streams, and then we'll do the uh, copy back for to, uh, both streams. So this ordering, this call ordering will allow these tasks to enter the, uh, the, um, the copy engine queue in a different order, then, uh, uh, which allows us to have more of the uh, overlap. So this shows the, order, the actual order where the uh, copy of A0, B0 to, uh, from host to device is immediately followed by the copy of A1 and B1 you know, from host to device. And then it will be followed by uh, copy data back from C0, C0 and C1. And there's still the same kind of dependencies from kernel 0 to the data copy A, B, A0 and B0. And um, there is still the same uh, dependence here from uh, data copy back from C, uh, for C0 to kernel zero execution. But it's just that within the copy engine queue, the order has been changed because we, uh, we changed the order of the API calls in the loop. Uh, in the loop. So this allows the uh, mem copy A1 and B1 to go into the uh, PCIe down um, engine be, uh, without being blocked by memory copy back uh, of C0. So this is reflected in the timing diagram here we will show the execution timing of one iteration uh, for two segments. So here we see that um, as soon as the, uh, the, the copy down engine finishes copying B0, it will be able to immediately uh, go and execute the uh, memory data transfer from host to device for A1 and B1. So this accomplishes a, uh, a uh, uh, overlap between the computation and the data transfer that we could not accomplish with the, uh, the piece of code we showed earlier. And um, also the, uh, the transfer of C back to the host now is overlapped with uh, the compute of A1 and B1. Unfortunately, when we move to the next iteration, the next iteration uh, copy of A2 and B2 will still be uh, blocked by the, uh, the data transfer of C1 back into the host because uh, the, that C1 will, be, will need to wait until the computation to be over. So this copying of B2 uh, and A2 and B2 are still going to, uh, to have difficulty overlapping the, with the computation A1 and B1. So now that piece of code that I introduced uh, solves part of the problem, increase the level of the, uh, the overlap between computation and communicate uh, and data transfer. But uh, at every loop iteration boundary, when we go move on to the next iteration, we will always have less of an overlap that we, uh, than we uh, hope to accomplish. So in order to, uh, to achieve an ideal pipeline timing, we actually need to have, uh, you know, the, for each loop iteration to issue essentially three, uh, iterate, uh, three streams worth so that uh, we, can, uh, we can have a uh, situation like this. But um, uh, what we really need to do, uh, uh, which uh, you would, uh, you know, if you are uh, trying to get the best possible performance in your uh, uh, lab, NP, what you need to do is you actually need to write a loop. And um, uh, outside the loop, you're going to do the A0, B0 transfer, and you will actually call the compute for A0, B0, and you will do the uh, transfer of A1 and B1 
outside the loop, all as the uh, tasks that, that you, you or function calls before you enter the loop. And then with, uh, when you enter the loop, you're going to be uh, essentially uh, uh, calling the data transfer of C0 uh, back, and then you will do the compute of A1, B1, and you will uh, transfer the data from A2 and B2 uh, all in that same loop iteration. And uh, you will be using a variable, uh, uh, you, three, you'll be using a variable to uh, essentially to, uh, to, to indicate uh, which stream you're using and then uh, you will be uh, incrementing the variable in, when you go to the next iteration so that you will be uh, using the next uh, few, uh, you know, the, the, new, the next combination. So uh, we, uh, this is a highly sophisticated, very complex, um, you know, what, uh, what we call the software pipeline uh, piece of code. And um, uh, unless you are really, really interested, uh, we would not uh, recommend you, to, you know, to, to, to try that. So I would recommend you try the simpler piece of code that we uh, introduce in uh, at least in, uh, achieve overlap between two segments. And um, uh, one simple implementation that you can do is you can have a, uh, a, a fairly large number, let's say eight uh, streams and uh, uh, that you can uh, use a array to hold all the uh, handles. And then as you do the loop iteration, you just increment the stream uh, index so that uh, you will have three consecutive streams that are uh, in operation in each loop iteration. But still, uh, you know, I, I uh, would like to encourage you to finish the simpler version before you attempt this more sophisticated version. Because of the complexity, the newer generations of hardware are not going to, uh, are actually uh, implementing what we call the hyperqueues. And um, uh, we, uh, in the hyperqueues, what happens is in front of each engine, whether it's copy engine or kernel engine, uh, we actually have multiple real queues for, the, for these engines. So that uh, when we have streams coming into, the, uh, into these uh, 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 engines, uh, we're going to be able to, uh, to store the, uh, the tasks that belong in different streams in different hardware queues in front of the engine. So you can imagine there are multiple engines in uh, queues in front of the copy engine and multiple uh, queues in front of the kernel engine. So uh, this allows uh, the hardware to pick from the head of the queues and um, uh, so that one uh, operation in one of the streams will not accidentally block another operation in another queue. So this uh, essentially allows us to achieve the full overlap even with the simpler piece of code, the simplest piece of code in the first uh, version where uh, we just essentially issue uh, all the operations in one, uh, in one stream, in one iteration and go on to the next one. And that, even that would uh, uh, likely work well with these hardware hypercubes. And starting from the Kepler GPU generation, uh, the, CP, uh, the GPUs now are equipped with uh, hyper queues, and um, uh, there will be probably increasing number of queues in front of each engine as the hardware improves. And I want to also make one more quick comment about the uh, the real benefit of implementing uh, the the uh, complex pipeline uh, execution for uh, the vector addition. It turns out that the vector addition kernel actually executes extremely fast. The time used for uh, executing vector addition kernel is about one tenth, uh, uh, actually maybe uh, even less than one tenth of the data transfer. So we're, we actually have an extremely small, extremely, extremely small, uh, you know, what uh, computation time here. So this is out of proportion for vector addition. The, the, it, so if we go back to the, uh, the last overlap picture, uh, what's really happening is that uh, when we have extremely small compute segment, then all we really can do in practice is really just to overlap the, the data transfer back to the host and then the data transfer to the device for the next segment. So uh, you will see in vector addition, if you implemented uh, all the uh, versions, you will see that even the simplest piece of code would uh, essentially get you pretty much all the benefit you can have for uh, vector addition. And this is because of the extremely small uh, amount of time we spend in the vector addition kernel. And um, uh, so this brings us to the end of the lecture.
And but I wanted to uh, mention uh, one uh, important uh, set of API functions that you will be using for these asynchronous data transfers. One is CUDA stream synchronize, and uh, uh, this function takes one uh, input uh, parameter, which is the stream identifier, and uh, this will force the host code to wait until all the tasks in a stream to have completed. So if you want to make sure that um, uh, you the, ho the host code wait until everything in a stream uh, so f have that uh, are in the stream so far have already finished before the host code can continue. In, in general, this is used for like a message passing coding, NPI, CUDA implementation, and so on. And this is the, uh, a good uh, uh, instruction to use. And uh, an example here is we can call CUDA stream synchronize with stream zero. And this will uh, force the host code to wait until all the tasks in the queues uh, of stream zero to complete. And then uh, there's another uh, even more general instruction called CUDA device synchronize. And this is also, can be also used in the host code. It doesn't take any parameter. And um, it will wait until all the tasks in all the streams to complete before it will, uh, the host code can continue its execution. So this is used whenever you really, really want to make sure that you, um, all the previous asynchronous operations in all the streams have completed execution before the host code will uh, try to use the data structure or uh, try to do the next batch of operations. So this brings us to the end of uh, week six. And uh, now you're, uh, you're ready to do the uh, lab uh, assignment on uh, streamed vector addition. And um, for those of you who would like to learn more about task, uh, the use of asynchronous data transfer, the overlap of communication uh, data transfer with computation, I'd like to uh, recommend that you read um, uh, Jason Sanders and Edward Kondrat. Uh, uh, there's an excellent book uh, uh, entitled CUDA by Example, an Introduction to General Purpose GPU Programming. And um, this uh, book goes into some very nice uh, example-based uh, teaching of how to write uh, CUDA, parallel CUDA code. And um, one of the chapters gives a very, very good uh, explanation of CUDA streams and the practical use of CUDA streams. Thank you.